God creates the water and we dig wells. The enemy seeks to stop the wells by covering it with dirt. The wells become dry and the dry wells become prisons. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. The world we live in is dying out of thirst. The church is the well where rivers of living water flow to bring life to people, breakthrough to finances, peace to families, healing to physical bodies and freedom to souls. Join us as we go digging. But today we're continuing in that series digging well and today I want to specifically touch on the subject of of tongues or a gift of tongues as one of the one of the uh, one of the gifts that Holy Spirit has for us and I want us to kind of dissect uh, this gift and the baptism of fire the filling of the Holy Ghost why it's important and why do we need to exercise that gift of speaking in tongues and uh, speak uh, praying in spirit amen and so uh, today we specifically dedicate this service that after this message that we're going to pray for those of you that want to receive that gift uh, and those of you that still think like oh yeah I can get by hopefully uh, this message will convince you to hunger and thirst for the gift and desire and if you do Bible says that you will receive it amen and today we will pray attend on the service and you will receive that gift in Jesus mighty name and so um, the gift of, of, of speaking in tongues um, we receive Holy Spirit on the day of our salvation. Uh, uh, sometimes people, and I've made a mistake, uh, and sometimes just the way uh, even preachers worded that uh, you receive the Holy Spirit when you are you are baptized in the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues. That's not so. Bible sa says that we receive the Holy Spirit on the day of our salvation. That we are sealed. Uh, by the Holy Spirit until the day of our uh, uh, until uh, until the day of our salvation and so uh, so when we are saved when we are saved we are re we receive the Holy Spirit but when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit we release the Holy Spirit we release his power that was given to us and um in John chapter um, 20 verses 22 it says that Jesus and and with that he breathed on them and said receive the Holy receive the Holy Spirit uh, we see that in that instance disciples they received the Holy Spirit in their spirit but they were not speaking in tongues yet they were not baptized in the Holy Spirit and that's why Jesus told the disciples when he was leaving to make sure that you wait in Jerusalem because you're about to go to the next level. You're about to, uh, you're about what you receive, that package is about to be unpacked. The package, you're about to be baptized uh, in, in Holy Spirit and you're about to be unleashed. You're about to be, you're about to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit and be empowered by him. And that's why in Acts chapter chapter 2 we, we see we see uh, in verses 4 that during the day of Pentecost the Holy Spirit came upon them and they begin to speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit enabled them uh, enabled them also in in uh, in the story of Saul when he was persecuting the church we see that he was going against Jesus he was going against the church and Jesus met him and he rebuked him and during the time, during, uh, during the time Saul, he said, Lord, what have you, what will you have me do? And we see that he declared Jesus as Lord. Bible says when we confess with our mouth and declare that he is Lord and with the heart we believe that we are saved. So we see upon that moment, he received the Holy Spirit. How do we know that? Because when he, he came uh, into the city and Ananias, he came out, he called him brother brother Saul and we know that you can't be uh, you, he, he would he would have not been a brother unless he was born again so through the scripture we see that upon encounter with Jesus Saul he received the Spirit of God he was saved but then in uh, further down in um, 
Ananias, he prayed for him to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And an Apostle Paul was filled and baptized in the Holy Spirit. So we see throughout the New, Te throughout the New Testament the importance of, of being filled and being baptized with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And uh, it's kind of like this, like a couple weeks ago, I was applying... Uh, for a business credit card with American Express and as I was going through application I applied it after the application said congratulations you received a unlimited uh, unlimited credit card for your business I was like wow I mean I was expecting maybe a couple thousand maybe ten thousand of limit or whatever but it got it, I received an unlimited credit line and I was like wow that's so cool but even though I had access now to the online portal, I could see the account number. I could I could I could access all the all the uh, backend stuff. I had to wait for the card to come in. And once the card came in, there is a sticker on the card that says, "Before using, call to what to activate it." Right. So that's kind of how how it is. When we get saved, we receive the Holy Spirit. Now we don't have to have any prerequisites we don't have to uh, qualify we don't have to have a good life we don't have to uh, be righteous on our own we don't have to have a good standing uh, God just gives us to us for free he makes us righteous we receive the Holy Spirit but when we're filled and baptized by the Holy Spirit it's like we're being activated and now that unlimited resource and power is at our disposal and the power works through us and flows through us like a river amen And with that, when we are baptized, when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues, we have a great gift at our disposal that we could use to enhance our life and to fulfill the calling of God upon our life. And so today I want to kind of dive in and discover few uh, benefits there are many benefits that we see in the bible but today i kind of want to focus on a few big ones the benefits of uh, having that gift and utilizing and speaking in tongues praying in the holy ghost praying in the spirit amen um first thing that i want to focus uh, attention on is that speaking in tongues speaking uh, praying in the spirit it enhances our prayer life see when we pray in our own language we're limited we're limited by our words you know sometimes have you been sometimes in a situation in a place where you you had something to express you had this excitement you had some kind of a feeling they want to express but your words just fell short have you ever experienced that because our language is limited you know knowing couple languages um, I can see where in certain areas uh, certain language can be more expressive and the other areas the other language can be more limited and those of you that bilingual you can agree with me right there's some languages that could some languages are easy to express certain things in other languages it's harder to to express so the reason why God gave out his language because he knew that our language is limited and our words are limited syllable uh, our, our sounds are limited so God has given us God has given us his language so that we will not be limited by our language whatever language you, whatever uh, whatever language you speak I, I believe I read a statistic that said that uh, English uh, on average a uh, person that speaks English knows 11,000 words it used to be 14,000 but with each generation it's kind of decreasing so uh, unfortunately uh, but regardless of your capacity of your vocabulary you might not be able to express your full desire you might not be be able to express the, the fullness that that you feel on inside you can express God or worship God the way you you feel like he needs to be worshiped God has given us his language he's given us a gift that we can worship God we can express to God on his language with no limitation in Jesus name amen, amen. um we also limited by our head knowledge we can pray only for what we understand and what we know and how many of you agree that we are very limited 
If you get yourself in a situation, you know, sometimes we look at the situation, we see no way out. Logically, we see no way forward. But this is where when you pray in the Spirit, when you pray in tongues, Holy Spirit can pray through you, uh, praying through a, a way out. Praying a way forward for you. Amen. Sometimes you find yourself in a situation and you, you, you're faced with either or option because that's all you're limited to by your head knowledge but when you pray in the spirit there are many options that Holy Spirit can open and guide you through you know, sometimes we find ourselves in in, um, in a particular uh, predicament and we begin to pray to God and uh, we begin to cry to uh, cry out God please take me out out of this situation and we begin to put God in a box this is the only way he can take us out because that's our only option but we, when we allow Holy Spirit to pray through us when we allow Holy Spirit to pray in us and through us God begins to open doors for us and we begin to move forward in Jesus name amen Bible says that oftentimes we don't receive an answer to the prayer because we do not pray in accordance to the will of God. Sometimes our will, our, our, our uh, desires and our, and, our, and our wishes and our prayers, they're not in alignment with the will of God. We think that this person is the best person to spend our life with and so we're praying God let this person love me, let this person be with me but God but that's not God's will. Sometimes we, we, go, we, get, we, we get into a, a business contract. We think this business contract will take us to the next level. But God sees the outcome of it and He sees where it's going to take our life. And it's not, it's, it's not where we should be, where, what direction we should, uh, we should be going. And so uh, when we pray in spirit, when we, we, when we pray in tongues, we pray in accord, we always pray in accordance to the will of God. Because Holy Spirit is always in sync with the Father. We always pray exactly what needs to be prayed at the exact time. It's a perfect language. It's a direct line to God without any distractions, without any motives on the way. Holy Spirit prays through us and He knows us the best and He's leading us to our best life in Jesus name. Amen church? Oftentimes what happens is we pray reactively. What do I mean? Is that we find ourselves in a situation. We find ourselves in trouble. We find ourselves in sickness. We find ourselves in a setback. We find ourselves uh, at the end of our rope, at the end of the road. And we begin to pray to God, God please save me. But when we pray in spirit, when we pray in tongues, we don't pray reactively. We, we pray preemptively. We begin to, Holy Spirit through us begins to cancel every plan of the enemy. He begins to cancel every attack that might be coming our way. We begin to prophesy into our future and begin to build our life and guide our life in Jesus' mighty name. See, Bible says that our tongue is like a steering wheel. It guides our life. And the pro but the problem is like we, we discussed, our tongue number one is, is limited. And, and, and two, it's sometimes destructive actually. And so when we surrender our tongue to the Holy Spirit, He can begin to guide and lead us by praying through us into the direction where our life needs to go. So then we don't find ourselves at the end of the road and asking God why and God has to rescue us and reroute us a different direction. When Holy Spirit prays through us, we are moving forward to the call that God and the purpose that God has for us. Amen. Holy Spirit knows the future. He knows things to come and He can be praying and He can preemptively begin to stop the things that will harm us and, and uh, reroute us, move us, position us in a place where we will not be harmed but we will be blessed in Jesus name. Amen. Uh, there's a man called Martin out of Georgia in USA. His testimony goes like this. Um, he, got he got saved, he got baptized uh, in the Holy Spirit and received the gift of speaking in tongues and one day one day he came home and he just had this urge this uh, this serious urge to pray in the spirit 
He didn't understand why. He just understood. He just kind of had the, had a sensation that it would be he would be praying for somebody, but he didn't know who, what, or what. And he began to speak in tongues. He began to pray intensely, uh, and he spent some time praying. And then after some time, when he was done praying, he received a phone call, a phone call that no parent would like to receive and the phone call went like this it was a state trooper on the other side that said that your daughter was in a severe car accident the car is completely smashed and broken even the engine block got smashed open and, and, and crushed and he said your daughter is okay but he's like in, in so many years of being state trooper seen many accidents going off the freeway at 80 miles an hour and hitting a tree he said I've never seen anybody survive like your daughter did and she is without a scratch and of course father was relieved that his daughter was okay and he asked him what time did that take place when the officer told him the time that it took place he quickly holy spirit quickly reminded him it was the time that he felt the urge to pray in the spirit so when we when we pray in the spirit now you don't have to be you, you don't you don't have to wait for the urge and desire to pray apostle paul says i pray at will so that means every time when you spend time with god when you have a fellowship with god you pray for your needs uh, apostle paul calls us to pray in in our natural language but as well also pray in the spirit once you had that time begin to pray in the spirit begin to set time aside in your day where you preemptively together with the holy spirit begin to go into your future begin to go into your life where you begin to intercede for things sometimes you know what you're praying for and sometimes you don't but nonetheless holy spirit is praying through you and he's working in your life in Jesus name. Amen church. So it enhances our prayer life. Let me put it this way. Police, medical staff, military, they have their own lingo. You know, alpha tango out and blah 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 whatever those things right. Yeah, eagle has landed, you know, bear has left the nest or whatever. Um, all these all these fancy things. But the reason why they have their own lingo is for them to better and more effectively to communicate. Same thing as police, they have their codes, they call in each other, they don't have to explain this big old long sentences, they just say, call, you know, call in and say code 29. And everybody knows, I don't know if it's actually, don't, get, don't hold me to it, I don't know if that, but I've heard something like that, okay. Uh, you know, everybody on the radio knows what's happening. They have codes for when a police officer is getting attacked or ambushed. They have codes for emergencies. And so instead of describing the whole situation, they just say this code or like in a hospital, code red. You know, everybody knows what's happening on, on, on the medical staff. No need to explain. We got this hospital male to age 29. He's having this and this and this and that. Everybody in medical staff knows what that code means. So when we pray in spirit, God... Holy Spirit and the Father, they have these codes. They can communicate between each other. Okay? To, to, the, to the outsider, it's, it's nonsense. To the outsider, it makes no sense. Even to you, that whole, when the Holy Spirit prays through you, it might not make sense. But Holy Spirit is communicating through through heavenly frequency, friendly language with the Father and, and, and a business is being done. Things are being done on your behalf, in your life, in your destiny, for the people around you, in Jesus' name. Amen. So it enhances your prayer life. Number two, I believe uh, that speaking in tongues, frequently speaking in tongues, it Bible says it builds our faith. In Jude uh, verse uh, chapter 1 verse 20, uh, here encourages us to pray in tongues because it builds our most holy faith and keeps us in the love of God. See faith is a is a crucial element in our Christian walk. Without faith Bible says that it's impossible to please God. Without faith um, we can't receive anything from God. Faith is a, is a heavenly currency. It's what transports things from spiritual into natural. And so if we don't have faith, we won't function as we intended to. We won't be um, as efficient as we're supposed to be as Christians. 
And so oftentimes we are weak in our spirit because we do not pray in the spirit. Because we don't pray in tongues. Because Apostle Paul lets us know that when we pray in tongues, when we pray in the spirit, we are building up our faith. Oftentimes we get struck by temptation, we get struck by fiery, Bible says, fiery darts of the enemy is because our shield of faith is small. Okay, have you seen some of these uh, uh, old times and uh, you know, uh, different armies had different shields. Roman had shields where it covered their, own, their entire body. They could hide behind their entire body. But have you seen some of these uh, armies that had a shield like this little round shield? You're like, what do I protect with this? Here, there, there, like, you know, like it's not, uh, how, how do you, how do you, how you uh, fight with that shield? And so sometimes I feel like that's how, that's how we, how we are when we go into the battle. You know, our shield is non-existent or small. We can't hide behind it and so when we pray in spirit we build our faith and we're strong this way we can resist the temptations we can resist the fiery darts of the enemy we can resist negative thoughts we can resist negativity because we are built up so many times in my life when I felt discouraged when I felt like you know I it's just fell down and and, and in, in prayer instead of just whining and complaining to God why is this not happening why is that not happening but I'll begin to pray in tongues and as Holy Spirit begins to fill me and it begins to bubble up in the spirit it begins to flow like a river afterwards you come out like a lion like nothing is impossible you feel built you feel strong you can take on the world you can take on the day build your faith by praying in spirit by praying in tongues amen the other thing that the other benefit that I didn't really hear anybody often speak and I didn't understand it but as I start studying that more I begin to hear more testimonies and realize that speaking in tongues also brings divine health and healing to our body and it comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 4 it says that we when we speak in tongues we edify oneself and when I heard that scripture I always thought that it speaks of our spirit Kind of like similar to what we talked about edifying meaning building our faith but it says here that we're not building uh, our faith but it says we edifying ourselves and not just our spirit but our entire selves our body soul and our spirit see i knew about the spirit i figured about like the soul you know when you pray in tongues I've experienced that that you know you feel stronger you feel more positive and all this stuff but I never thought in the aspect that it could bring healing and rejuvenation to our body see the word edify in that uh, in that context uh, it's a, uh, it's a Greek word where is it where's my thing here um, it's a Greek word oikodomeo that means to build a house erect a building repair or remodel so when bible says bible says that we are the temple that our body is the temple of the holy spirit so if here we're talking about that you edify you build you remodel you 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 repair you edify oneself that means you can receive healing in your body rejuvenation strength in your body when you pray in spirit when you pray in tongues heard this testimony of this person this this man this gentleman called Perry, Perry he had um, so he he was saved and he was baptized in the Holy Spirit and he was with, with evidence of speaking in tongues and um, one uh, at the point uh, one point of his life he was discovered that he had an inch and a half cyst on his pancreas and it required a surgery and a surgery is very complex to remove cysts from a pancreas uh, it's actually more complicated than do a, uh, doing a heart transplant. So obviously he was, he was scared. He was afraid. He was, he was uh, uh, you know, he was discouraged. Uh, and as he was reading the Bible, when he went home, as he was reading the Bible, he came across this verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 4, that as you pray in tongues, you edify yourself. You build yourself up. And he said, and he began to pray in tongues. He began to, for next two months, he began intensely to pray in tongues. When he went back for his pre-surgery kind of uh, exam, they discovered that his, his, his cyst shrunk by more than half. Yeah. 
and and so and then and uh, the doctor said that there's no longer a need for uh, for surgery they were obviously surprised that 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 happened and uh, he continued to pray and we believe that he received his full uh, healing but when we pray in the spirit when we pray in tongues we also edify our body um, when we pray in the spirit we also it also gives us power over fear and anxiety in Jude chapter 1 verse 20 the one that we read it says that God will keep us in his love in John first John chapter 4 verse 18 says that perfect love casts out all fear when we pray in the spirit when we pray in tongues we uh, we are able to counter every fear and every anxiety that comes in our life so if you feel anxious if you feel afraid if you, if you feel like that you know you're being overwhelmed begin to pray in spirit begin to counter that with the spirit of God begin to pray in the spirit and you will see how that fear how God's gonna begin to move you into his presence where everything else fades where he's gonna begin to fill you with his love by his spirit and his love will break away every fear anxiety and every anxiousness Timothy chapter uh, 2 Timothy chapter uh, 1 verse 6 and 7 says therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands for God has not given us spirit of fear but of power and of love and of sound mind you feel like you're losing your mind you can't take it anymore begin to sp pray in your spirit and you will see how how Holy Spirit will begin to bring life and begin to cast out the fear and break the grip of fear and anxiety over your life in Jesus name amen church amen and last thing is that there's many there's many things but the last thing that we're gonna mention is gives you boldness to witness gives you boldness to witness in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 that we see when the Holy Spirit filled them that they were filled with power and boldness to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ every one of us are different here and uh, some of us are more outgoing some of us are more reserved and witnessing and approaching a stranger when God puts on our heart or talking to some person or even talking to a friend sometimes can be intimidating and uh, uh, hard to break that first barrier to begin to talk to them about Jesus to share the gospel with them this is where Holy Spirit comes into play he knows we are weak he knows that we are uh, we, we're not where we need to be uh, and that's why Holy Spirit comes in us and when we pray in tongues he gives us boldness to be bold for the sake of Jesus to be bold for the sake of the gospel to spread his gospel all across the earth to share the gospel with Jesus to, uh, to, uh, with people about Jesus and bring uh, and bring the gospel to the people around us amen there are many benefits the bible lists as it shows us is to pray in, uh, the benefits to pray in tongues to pray in the spirit uh, and another another one, one of the benefits is helps us to be sensitive to the holy spirit help us to be sensitive to the gifts of the holy spirit uh, one uh, one other one uh, that says that uh, it helps us to 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 tame and to control our tongue when we pray in the holy ghost tongue and there's many other benefits but I want us to make a determination today and reignite the desire and to 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 be prayerful in the spirit to allow the Holy Spirit to pray through us amen to allow the Holy Spirit to work through us oftentimes you know what happens we when there's a conference where there's a man of God woman of God comes to some place or comes to the church we eagerly want to go and ask them to lay their hands on us and pray for us right and there's nothing wrong with it it's all good it's biblical it's scriptural we should do that but Bible says the Holy Spirit wants to pray through us for us right while we sometimes put so much attention to have the man of God or woman of God to pray for us but ignore the fact that in our everyday life in our prayer walk Holy Spirit wants to pray for us God himself wants to pray for us but we have to give him an opportunity to do so okay we have to give an opportunity to pray through us we have to open our mouth Apostle Paul says that uh, that uh, 
pray in tongues as I will. You have to intentionally open your mouth and begin to pray in Jesus name. Amen. And so quickly I want to talk about how to receive this gift. In Luke chapter 11 verse 13 it says this that by asking God if you then though you are evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your father in heavens give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him if you want to receive that gift of speaking in tongues if you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit all you have to do is ask that's that simple it's that simple all you have to do is ask and Bible says the moment you ask he gives it to you the moment you ask he gives it to you so that what do you do then you receive by faith that I have received it if you ask God immediately he gives it to you just like when you are saved when you came to the front and you pray the prayer say Lord Jesus forgive me of my sins receive me as your son as your daughter the moment you pray that prayer you take it by faith that you're saved right you are saved right at that moment in the same sense when you pray God to and ask God fill me with the Holy Spirit in that the same manner you receive it by faith that I got it then what do you do then you open your mouth and begin to speak Bible says that they spoke as spirit filled them oftentimes people think that oh um, you have to uh, you, you have to be overwhelmed you have to be taken over Holy Spirit has to just take over and uh, over you and you're just gonna it's gonna come out automatically without your doing that's not the way it is sometimes it happens true but most of the time that's not the way it is Bible says they spoke as the Holy Spirit enabled them so that means you have to open your mouth you have to begin to make noise and syllables and trust that the syllables the noise that you're making by faith that Holy Spirit takes it and makes sense of it to the Father that by faith those noises and those syllables that are coming out of your mouth that Holy Spirit puts heavenly meaning to it and they make sense to God he's pleased with it and he has understands what you're saying to him that's it that's how simple that is you speak and Holy Spirit enables you open your mouth and the rivers of, uh, of living waters begin to flow it's not complicated um, it's the hindrance of receiving tons usually is because we overthink it we think it's gonna be something mystical something so complicated uh, just relax start making sounds start making noise start, making, uh, start producing vowels Holy Spirit will take over and begin to work through you it's kind of like this you drive a car every day most of you don't know how the car operates outside of put the key in push the gas uh, put it in a drive and push the gas pedal you don't understand how everything works in there how the engine combusts produces movement that the movement is transferred into the transmission then transferred into the axles and then how the brake system works how all that stuff we we don't know we just get in there we intentionally put our foot on the pedal and then the car begins to drive and then we're able to travel 70 miles per hour which otherwise you wouldn't be able to do before right so you open your mouth you begin to make noises syllables vowels and God begins to take over Spirit of God begins to take over begins to add meaning to it and that's how you speak in tongues that's how you receive that gift amen 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 so today we're gonna pray and we're gonna trust God that those of you that have not active been activated that have not received that gift that today you'll have that gift that today your prayer life will go to another level that today your faith level will uh, that, that your faith your innermost will go to another level you'll be built in faith that today you're gonna go to another level in relationship with God amen just the last thing um, from a science standpoint uh, when Dr. Andrew Newberg a neuros uh, neuroscientist he compared brain scans of Christians praying in tongues with Buddhist monks chanting, uh, Buddhist, uh, Buddhist monks chanting and Catholics nuns praying uh, and studied and showed that the front lobes where the brain control the brain control center went quiet in the brains of Christians talking in tongues proving that speaking in tongues isn't a natural function of the brain but it's a supernatural function of the spirit so 
what I'm saying is that don't overthink it don't make it complex you yield your mind to God you come to God and say God I trust you that what's gonna come out of my mouth you're gonna add meaning to it and I'm gonna be speaking hand in the language hey this is Pastor Vlad and thank you for watching this sermon please click on the subscribe so that you can be a part of our Hungry Generation YouTube community and click on the bell as well so that you can be notified when we upload the new sermon. Thank you for watching and God bless you.